Hello fans, welcome to the electrifying world of F1 racing. Rev up your engines and get ready for some exciting news in the world of motorsports. In today's video, we'll be discussing the latest development in the Formula 1 racing scene as Red Bull's top brass has finally confirmed the much-awaited chance for one of the most beloved drivers, Daniel Ricciardo, to take the wheel. Many have been eagerly awaiting for this announcement, and we've got all the details right here. So buckle up and join us as we dive into everything you need to know about Daniel Ricciardo's future at Red Bull and why a race seat next year is not out of the question. Daniel Ricciardo made his Formula 1 debut in 2011 with Red Bull support, joining Hispania Racing midway through the season before moving on to Toro Rosso, now known as Alpha Tauri and then the drinks company's senior team. After a successful stint at Milton Keys that yielded seven wins and a slew of podium finishes, Ricardo chose to pursue new challenges at Renault and later McLaren. Two years with the working team, however, did not yield the desired results. Ricardo left McLaren at the end of last season and returned to Red Bull as a third driver, with the high of winning the 2021 Italian Grand Prix outweighed by the low of struggling to match teammate Lando Norris weekend in and weekend out. Discussing Ricardo's return over the Australian Grand Prix weekend, team boss Christian Horner said, It's great to have him back in blue and back in the team. He's really throwing himself into it. He's sitting in all the briefings. He's been working hard on the simulator as well, doing some race support and some development work on that. Daniel's just a positive energy to have around, and it's great to see him getting his mojo back. To see that big smile on his face, he lights up a room when he walks in. His popularity in Formula 1, even though he's not driving, he's still probably the most popular driver here. And for us, it's just positive to have him in the team, contributing to the team, to the drivers, to the engineering team. Horner also revealed, much to the delight and surprise of Ricardo fans, that the Australian will spend some time behind the wheel of the dominant Red Bull, participating in some tests later in the season. Hopefully he'll rediscover his love for the sport. He'll do a bit of testing for us later in the year and we'll see how that goes for him. But I think it's a different experience. He's thrown himself in and he's embracing this new role. Daniel Ricciardo appears to be taking his new role in stride and playing the team game for Red Bull. He has also used his free time to stay in shape in case he is called upon to replace Verstappen or Perez. As Horner mentioned, he would be testing for Red Bull later in the year. What will this mean for Sergio Perez? Could Daniel stand a chance at replacing him for the next season? If Sergio Perez is looking to extend his contract, Daniel Ricciardo is a threat. Sergio Perez must have the ability to outperform the Aussie when the time comes. Later in the season, Ricciardo could drive the RB19 in FP1 at any of the circuits. We all know how much Ricciardo adores the United States, but he is unlikely to take behind the wheel in Las Vegas. Because the track is new, Red Bull will want their main drivers to spend as much time as possible on it. However, we may see Ricardo in the RB19 in Austin. With Ricardo's outfits and gimmicks, this has the potential to be an entertaining weekend. When Ricardo does get behind the wheel of the RB19, everyone will be watching his lap times. If he proves to be quick and dependable, he may be given a few options for the 2024 season. But while Ricardo is still a talented driver, even if his time at Renault and McLaren has tainted his reputation, he must be motivated enough to fight for a 2024 seat. As you may know, after McLaren boss Zach Brown decided not to renew Ricardo's contract, rumours flew about where he might end up for the 2023 season. He eventually decided to take a step back and work as a reserve driver for his old team. The 33-year-old, however, has been back at the centre of the rumour mill as speculation about his future in the sport continues to mount. Now, one team boss has revealed that he had private talks with the Australian star in the run-up to the Australian Grand Prix. The third race on the calendar marked Ricardo's return to the paddock and fans in Australia cheered as they saw their hero parade around with his infectious smile on full display. And it was Gunther Steiner, the Haas team principal, that revealed that he spoke with the Australian prior to the Formula 1 race. The Haas boss left the door open for Ricardo to join the team for the 2023 season, but it was salary demands that made the team reluctant to offer him a contract. However, the two cross paths again on the plane ride to Australia, though discussions about his 2024 plans were not mentioned, according to Steiner. I actually was with Danny on the plane to Australia, so we had a little bit of a chat. Not about the contract, just about general life. We didn't even go there, to be honest. Steiner sold. Sky Sports. I don't know. Danny wanted to take a year out and then see what he wants to do next. And I think when he's ready, he will phone people up and say, I'm ready again. Ricardo has expressed his desire to use this year away from the cockpit to do what he was unable to do while a full-time member of the Formula 1 circus, 
all while working hard to position himself for a competitive seat in the 2024 season. Ricardo is also looking for a competitive return to F1, as he does not want to simply make up the numbers on the grid. Thus, Steiner believes Ricardo is in control of his own destiny the next season, and it is up to him to decide first and foremost whether he wants a spot on the grid in 2024 before he puts the feelers out to try and gain a seat. I think he's doing the right thing to take a year out, Steiner said. I mean, he's still a reserve driver for Red Bull. He can be around cars. He can be in the circus. You know, because out of sight, out of mind. So he's still there. Then he needs to make up his own mind if he wants to continue or if he wants to call it a day and do something different. He is still pretty young, you know. A lot of people like him because of his personality, but it's for him to decide. It's good to have a year, in my opinion, just to reflect on it, because for sure, the last year wasn't easy for him because he is a good race car driver and he was beaten by his teammate. And for sure, he's not happy about that. He's still not happy. But does he want to come back and prove that he's what he was before, a winner? Or is he given the opportunity? Because it's not only his decision, it is a decision of one of the teams which take him on as well. So it's not an easy answer there. But I think the first thing he needs to feel out for himself is if he wants to come back or not. Ricardo has stated on numerous occasions that he hopes to return to the grid next year. But he did have a difficult time as Lando Norris's teammate at McLaren, with his younger colleague frequently having the upper hand alongside him. But with some time to reflect, Steiner believes that taking a year off could lead to a bigger leap if he decides to return, and he was able to land a drive. But what are the most likely teams where Ricardo could end up? Let's take a look. Alpine. Ricardo may have excelled at Alpine's predecessor Renault, but the French team appears to have secured their driver future for the time being. Pierre Gasly joined this season on a multi-year contract, while Esteban Ocon is set to stay until the end of 2024, with the only potential snag being if the previous bad blood between the two Frenchmen resurfaces and makes one of their positions untenable. In that case, Alpine may be tempted to give one of their former drivers another shot, but for the time being, everything is calm. Mercedes. One option that is very much in the maybe but probably not camp is for Ricardo to replace Lewis Hamilton, who has yet to decide his future at Mercedes. Hamilton has stated that he's unlikely to hang up his gloves just yet and believes he has it in him to stay for a few more years. But while both he and Toto Wolff have confirmed that a new Mercedes contract is on the way, no pen has been put to paper. Mercedes were also interested in acquiring Ricardo's services as a third driver before Red Bull snatched him up, indicating that the brains of Brackley and Bricksworth see something in him. Alfa Romeo Given that Zhou Guangyu was the only rookie on the track in 2022, it was difficult to determine how well he performed in his debut season. He was soundly defeated by Valtteri Bottas, which was unsurprising given the disparity in experience before having his contract extended late in the year. That indicated Alpha was not entirely convinced, but did not see a better alternative. If the Chinese driver fails to set the world on fire in 2023, the team may look to go in a different direction, and Ricardo could be a viable option. Ricardo would also be interested in the move, especially given Audi's future involvement. With Andreas Seidel already on board, Ricardo will have a familiar face to work with. Red Bull. Right now, if you had to bet on what colors of overalls Ricardo would be wearing in 2024, Red Bull would be a popular choice. Christian Horner has never hidden his admiration for his former driver, and the third driver role was a lifeline throw to a man who appeared to be on his way out of the paddock entirely. Another man in the Red Bull garage who, aside from Baku 2018, had a good relationship with the Australian is Max Verstappen, which makes for an interesting narrative heading into 2023. Verstappen's relationship with Sergio Perez appeared to deteriorate at times in 2022, and that trend has continued this season. So is there a team principal on the grid who would back himself more to get the best out of Ricardo than Horner? After all, he's already mentioned getting Daniel back to his old self after a nightmare spell at McLaren. Haas. Yes, we know Ricardo turned down a half seat in 2023, but the stars may align for Gunther Steiner and company to make another move in 2024. A year later, Ricardo is itching to get back into Formula 1, but the phone hasn't been ringing. So, perhaps that Haas deal he previously turned down now looks a lot more appealing. With Kevin Magnussen out of contract at the end of the season and Nico Hülkenberg only confirmed for 2023, though the team does have an option on him for 24, Haas could be in the market for a new driver and Steiner does not appear to be the type of man to hold a grudge, especially when he could get a driver of Ricardo's calibre in the team. In fact, Steiner has already begun to lay the groundwork for future talks with Ricardo. 
It's a little bit early to speak about a driver change already for next year, he said back in March. So let's see how we are doing with Kevin Magnussen and Nico Hulkenberg. And for sure, at some point, maybe I speak with him, but I cannot promise anything because if our two guys do a good job, I think that is where I stand with it. But yeah, for sure, Danny is, everybody is wanting to speak with Danny after a year off. Maybe he knows again what he wants to do, and he will be interesting for everybody in Formula 1. But at the moment, I have a new driver this year that has done only two races, so I need to give him a little bit of chance. What Haas will have to do this season is put in enough strong performances to entice a big name like Ricardo. Ricardo has long been one of the most popular figures in the Formula 1 paddock, with his trademark grin never far from sight during his glory days, and numerous moments in his career becoming viral social media clips. While many have adored the Australian over the years, some drivers have found Ricardo's personality to be a bit too much at times. Daniel Kvyat Kvyat was drafted in to replace Sebastian Vettel at Red Bull after the four-time world champion left for Ferrari in 2015. And given the way Ricardo had defied expectations and run the rule over his illustrious teammate the year before, Kvyat elaborated on the atmosphere he had entered when he was promoted from Toro Rosso. Daniel Ricciardo at the time was like a big superstar, and when I came into the team, he just beat Vettel, so there was a lot of hype around him in the team and everywhere, Kvyat explained on the Track Limits podcast. So everyone was like, yeah, he's the man to beat now. He's probably the best driver on the grid right now. That's what they were telling me. So for me, it was huge. Now it's different, of course, but back then he was top notch. So for me, it was a big year, 2015, when I just got into a Red Bull. Kvyat and Ricardo have obviously spent a lot of time in each other's company as Red Bull teammates. And the Russian explained that the pair ended up in the team's motorhome for hours on end, poring over the day's data as they looked for a competitive advantage. And given the context of his career thus far, Kvyat considers the Australian to be one of his most formidable opponents, even if his playful side became a little too much on occasion. My impression of him was he was the man at the time. Very funny personality, so very attractive for the media. A bit too much for me, but no, we got along well, Kvyat said. There was a lot of rivalry between us, of course. The beginning was like he was taking things easy. Then, when he saw that, okay, I have pace, then he started also to stay in the motorhome until midnight, like me, and we were both there sitting, engineers were gone already, and we were still there studying the data, seeing who would go home later. But no, I rate him very good. I think those cars, they suited him up perfectly also at the time, had good understanding of tyres. Those tyres were a bit different, they were very fragile. He's been a very strong rival, I think pushing me to the limit. An impression? Yeah, a lot of jokes, but he's a nice, nice guy. But what do you think of Daniel Ricciardo's personality? Do you think he's not serious at times? What are your thoughts on his chances of racing in 2024? Which team is most likely to host the Australian next year? Please let us know in the comments section below. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, subscribe, and click the bell icon. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you again soon.